We are at the Central Sierra Snow Lab on the Pacific crest of the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. It's a dream job, man. Stand outside in the snow and play with tubes all day. The more measurements we have of the snowpack, the more we can kind of estimate. A rough idea of knowing what rain's gonna do to the snowpack. Come on. And what we wanna understand is how much water is in the snowpack. We have a federal sampler tube, which is hollow inside and has marks on the outside to tell you how deep the snowpack is. So, we take this, shove it into the snow. Is it fair to say that rain is a threat to the snow? Rain is absolutely a threat to the snowpack. It's not just the mountains that benefit from it because of our streams and our reservoirs, right? This is another reservoir that sits on top of the hill, but ultimately what we have to have is the snowpack that melts and then runs down there. And it, when we don't have consistent water supply, it wreaks havoc on, on our crops and on how much irrigation we have and on our water uses. And if we're switching back and forth between, you know, snowfall and super warm days and snowfall and super warm days, we might not have the chance to really build an efficient snowpack to run off to the agriculture and farmers that need it. Hold that cradle up. Okay. It's at 64 inches. We've got about 48 inches inside of there. It's gonna be a little bit heavy, so give it some good weight on your side okay. if you can. Kind of like weighing a big fish, actually. Yeah, that's a, that would be a, this would be the biggest fish I ever <laughs> caught. 64. Did I do a good job? You did a fantastic job. Oh, thank you. I've done this with a few students and by far, I'd say you, you've won out of the pole holder so like far. To, There's a lot of people that like to drop it. I like to <laughs> Better than a 22-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep it straight up and down. Go down all in one level motion. Okay, so the crazy thing about that scale, it's calibrated specifically to tell us the water overall, so we don't have to do a calculation. It does the calculation basically is in the scale. Exactly. That's interesting. Trying to get all those measurements in at once is a monumental <laughs> task. Yeah, yeah. And so ha making it as easy as possible and as fast as possible is, is really the it's way well to designed. do it. Yeah. So what's that reading on that scale? 72. So that measurement actually told us that we have about a 16 inches of water contained in the snow in this point. You figure out how deep it was and then you figure out how much it weighed. Yep. And that tells you how, basically how much rain it would be. If, effectively, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's, that's a great way to put it. It's just how much liquid water um, or rain, this amount of snow would be. Is that a lot? 16 inches for this time of year is pretty good, yeah. Uh, we're above average right now, so that's that's a pretty solid amount. Um, you know, later in the year, you can get as double, triple that, so if we took the snow underneath us and melted it down, it would be about 16 inches of water that could flow off the hill and into reservoirs. A lot of models within the water world have been developed using kind of very basic principles that was, you know, if we get X amount of snowfall, we can expect X amount of water in our reservoirs. Um, and, and yet, that's no longer the case. It's becoming a lot more erratic in how the snowpack is, is staying around and a lot less predictable, which is a problem, of course, for managing our water. All of our models are based on averages, and when we have wild swings from one way to the, to the next, that, those averages don't occur. And so uh, when we want to model based off of averages and they're not occurring, we don't really know how, how to model our water or manage it that well. That's a problem in California. I guess it's a problem everywhere. It's a big problem, yeah. A big problem everywhere throughout the Western US, but especially here in California, yeah. 